Ah, HDMI. Since its inception nearly 20 years ago, it has slowly but surely become the dominant video interface in television. And for good reason too. It's fully digital, meaning effectively no quality loss from analog conversion, and for those of us in countries that never got SCART, one plug is way more convenient than three for crappy composite or five with those unwieldy component cables. The sixth generation of game consoles were born right in that awkward transitional phase where a lot of them do support high definition and progressive scan to an extent, but almost none of them have a native digital output with the exception of this proprietary digital AV port on early GameCubes that was eventually removed due to lack of use. HDMI is so ubiquitous today that modern TVs often don't even have any other inputs, and I've already talked about how capture cards are pretty much all HDMI only nowadays. For retro enthusiasts, this has created a demand for HDMI in consoles that never officially supported it. There are of course many ways to simply convert an analog signal to HDMI nowadays, and for most people this is probably sufficient. But a round trip conversion to analog and back is a little wasteful and there's always some loss in overall video quality. For some people that might be part of the aesthetic, and I get that. But if you're like me and you like clean pictures, wouldn't it be great if you could tap into the console's native digital video before it gets converted to analog? Well, over the past few years there's been a boom in mods that do exactly that. Tapping into the console's digital video from the GPU and encoding it into HDMI compatible with any modern TV or monitor. When one such mod for the OG Xbox was released in late 2020, I was immediately interested. But due to stuff affecting international shipping, and me internationally shipping myself to another country last year, I only managed to get my hands on one recently. But we've been on an Xbox modding kick lately anyway, so I figure it's the perfect time to give it a shot. Okay, so let's try installing the Xbox HD Plus. Now to do that, we'll need a Xbox motherboard. Here's one I prepared earlier. Given that this is like, what, the third Xbox video this year, I figured we all know what it looks like taking it apart, so just skip right to it. So here's my Xbox HD package from Make Megahertz. I haven't even looked in this yet. I really need a letter opener. Okay, looking good. Wires and envelopes. Cute. I like the pineapple. What's in the envelopes, I wonder? QR code on them. And a card. Oh, and a ribbon cable. So I think they're just ribbon cables. There are quite a few pieces to this, but that's okay. Now, step one of this, funnily enough, will be installing a mod chip, Open Xenium to be specific. Now, you don't technically need a mod chip, but it is highly recommended and is necessary to take full advantage of the mod. Thankfully, they've actually packaged an Open Xenium with it, which is wonderful. We love that for me. As the name suggests, open Xeniums are open source, so if you're having trouble finding one in stock, it's actually completely possible to build one yourself. And if you end up doing that and need some PCBs printed, then I highly recommend getting them from my friends at PCBWay. They make fantastic stuff, I've used their services before on builds like the OGX 360, and I can absolutely vouch for their build quality, ease of use, and customer service. They even do plastic and metal manufacturing, which I'd actually love to get more into. So check them out if you're planning to build or prototype something soon. I know I will be. So this is actually my first mod chip installation. I've seen Xboxes with mod chips installed, but I've personally always stuck to soft mods. That's just how it's been. But installing an Xbox mod chip is actually really straightforward. Basically involves tapping into the LBC bus that Microsoft very helpfully left open on the board. They did try to limit its exploitability in later models such as this one by disconnecting parts of the LBC, but it's not hard to reconnect them. In fact, Make Megahertz included a pre-fitted board to make it even easier. This is called rebuilding the LPC, and it's extremely well documented online. Okay, looking good. That's, I believe, everything nicely soldered together. And on the top side, we just have these jumper pins that we can plug the mod chip onto. Okay, good news. I've plugged it in, and it hasn't blown up. Let's start it up, shall we? And hey, it's Xenium OS. This completely overrides the stock BIOS and allows you to launch your own. Usually a BIOS with a modified kernel that disables region locks, allows unsigned code, all that good stuff. Effectively, this Xbox is officially mod chipped. Because this is my first mod chip install, it's actually kind of interesting to see the Xbox running with no DVD drive and hard drive. Soft mods require all the hardware to sort of be intact or else it'll throw an error message. So now that the mod chip is all set up, it was time to install the Xbox HD Plus software, which needed to be in a very specific location on the hard drive. <laughs> It'll do. However, I ended up having a surprising amount of trouble doing this for a very silly reason. 
Basically, this Xbox was soft modded and happened to have Shadow C enabled. Shadow C essentially mounts a disk image in place of the C drive on boot so that it's harder to accidentally destroy your soft mod. And to give you as much space as possible, that disk image consumes all the space on the C drive that isn't taken up by the soft mod. So essentially, all of the trouble I was having literally came down to the C drive was full. In my defense, the error was pretty cryptic, but I probably should have figured that out sooner. It's my first mod chip, go easy on me. Because we're hard modded, we can actually just delete the soft mod and Shadow C entirely now, giving us plenty of space for the app. I guess we have to patch the BIOS now. Fuck, this is a lot more complicated than I thought it was gonna be. Yep, this is why we installed that mod chip. Patching the kernel is necessary to use the hardware we'll be installing later on. While you can patch the kernel in memory from a soft mod, it's much less reliable since a soft mod is effectively tied to your hard drive. If your hard drive ended up dying, so would your video output since there'd be nothing to patch the kernel anymore and this mod removes the original port. With the mod chip, the patched kernel will always be there, and even if something goes wrong during installation, you always have Xenium OS as a fallback which supports the HDMI mod out of the box. Now for legal reasons, Make Megahertz can only provide the patch, not the original kernel, so you'll have to <coughs> legally acquire it yourself. After that, there are a few steps involved in extracting the kernel, patching it, rebuilding the BIOS, transferring it to the Xbox, BIOS, and installing it to the mod chip. Alright, let's try booting. It'll take some time, so time to take a pee break, huh? Hey look, it worked! We're in Unleash X and it's crappy default uh, theme. Now we can use the Xbox HD app we installed earlier to tell us whether our kernel patch was actually successful or not. Kernel patch version incompatible, it appears you're currently running a non-Xbox HD plus patched BIOS. <laughs> Let's try that again. So yeah, I made a mistake with the first patch. I accidentally used like the wrong thing with the thing, you know how it is. But I soon fixed that up and the app confirmed everything was good. Knowing that, we can now proceed with the hardware. By the way, this isn't really intended to be a tutorial, I'm more just reviewing the installation experience and providing a general overview of what it's like to install one of these. If you need actual instructions, Make Megahertz provides detailed documentation that I'll link in the description down below. Let us continue. First step is to remove the motherboard from the Xbox. No problem. <sighs> Maybe a little bit of a problem. So now we are supposed to remove the CPU and GPU heatsink. That's fun. That means I'll get to replace the uh, heatsink grease, which everyone was telling me to do. Except it wasn't fun. For some reason, the stuff that was used on the OG Xbox is like super glue. They're already clamped down to the board, but apparently that wasn't enough for Microsoft. They made the shit so hard to get off that at least one person managed to damage their chips trying to remove them. And speaking of the clamps, getting the GPU clamp off virtually requires bending the surrounding heatsink fins. At first I was trying to be super gentle with it and nothing was happening, so I watched a video to see if I was even doing it right. Jesus, this guy doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> I did try my best to remove it without bending anything, but... <sighs> I end up bending one in anyway. Come on. But once again, the clamp was the least of my problems, thanks to that super glue heatsink grease. These sons of bitches, why did they do this? Replacing heatsink grease is a good idea. Why did they make it like glue so you can't fucking take them off? Bro, I'm calling up Seamus Blackley right now to fucking complain about this. The main trick is to apply heat and gently twist them. Make Megahertz's guide recommends applying up to 100 degrees Celsius. I didn't have any tools on hand that could apply heat like that, so I just left it running for a few minutes. This was actually pretty effective, and I finally got both of the heat sinks off. But that super glue grease was still a problem as I tried to clean it off. Even with alcohol and WD-40, this stuff was stubborn as hell. All in all, this probably took over an hour, which is crazy when usually something like this would only take about 5 minutes. Finally, I have to take off this bracket, which is held in with a bunch of plastic pegs. As far as I know, there's no sophisticated approach to these, you just basically have to pull them out. And after all of that, you finally have access to these surface mount points, which is where we'll be getting our video signal. But before that, we do need to remove the original AV port. This was by far the longest part of the process for me. So much so that at some point I just kind of stopped recording. Desoldering is my Achilles heel. Mostly because it requires a lot of patience and I have virtually none. I got one of those fancy desoldering guns which definitely helped a lot, but since it was my first time using it, it was still a lot slower than it could have been. But hey, at least I didn't have to do this with solder braid. I probably would have thrown my Xbox out the window, followed shortly by myself. And we can just pop it out. Look at that. A whole Xbox AV port completely taken out. Love that. We love that for it. So I guess if anyone wants a 
spare AV port, uh, hit me up. While that was a fairly brief step in the guide, it did take a long time, and we're only on step three. Next, you need to jump a few of the now free AV holes. I believe this is because the Xbox refuses to start up if there's no AV cable attached, so jumping these pins tricks it into thinking there always is one. And now for the ribbon cable. Now, what's funny is they actually gave me not one, but three of the same flex cable. This could have been a mistake, or it could be that this is really easy to screw up and I might need a couple goes at it. This is probably one of the more intimidating things for beginner solderers, but it's actually not that hard. Once again, the main thing here is patience. You want each pin to have a solid connection without bridging any of them together. All right. I think that looks pretty good. <laughs> All right, next step. Then there are a few more wires for things like power, sound, and sync, and is that it? Not quite. Because an HDMI plug is considerably smaller than the Xbox's multi-AV output, there's an optional 3D printed bracket you can install to fill the remaining space. Installing this requires disassembling the case even further, taking out the metal shielding, which requires removing the faceplate held on with strong plastic tabs. This was actually all a new experience for me. I've opened tons of Xboxes in my life, but never gone so far as to remove the metal shielding before. Of course, I found some more dust that had to be dealt with, so at least I can now say that this Xbox has been very thoroughly cleaned. And all of that is to install this HDMI bracket. But wow, does it look good. It actually almost looks official. In fact, if you told me this was a rare, very late model Xbox that supported HDMI, I'd believe it. Now we can start reassembling. Of course, we'll reattach the heatsinks with some brand new compound and pop that heatsink bracket in with all its plastic pegs. Hopefully that soldering is all good. <laughs> And now for the final step of the mod, actually installing the HDMI board. It fits snugly with the bracket we installed before, and from here it was all pretty easy. Mainly just wiring up what we soldered earlier, the ribbon cable which inserts into a ZIF connector, and those power and sync wires from nearby. And with that, we are finally, officially, done. It is time to power it on, and play some damn games. At least, that's what I hoped would happen. What actually happened was it appeared to not work at all. I was seeing all the right LEDs on the board, but anything I would plug it into just said no signal. Eventually, after getting some help from the Make Megahertz Discord, I figured out what was wrong. Nothing. The mod was actually working fine. Except... A few videos ago, I installed an SSD in this Xbox with an IDE to SATA adapter, and it became immediately apparent that boot times were a lot longer. The disk speed didn't seem slow overall, it just seemed to take a while to start up. What I didn't know at this point was the Xbox HD app we installed earlier isn't just an app. Part of it is also loaded by the patched kernel on startup. In practice, what that means is that the hard drive needs to be accessible as soon as the Xbox boots. Before, it could still play the boot animation and do other initialization things while it was waiting for the hard drive to pick up. Now, it has to do all of that waiting before anything else can happen. So yeah, if I'd only just waited the 45 seconds or so that it takes for the SATA adapter to get picked up, I would have realized that the mod was literally working fine. In my defense, an Xbox usually does start pretty instantaneously, so without knowing how the mod works, there was no real reason to expect that to change. But yeah, the moral of the story is, the mod is working, and it looks fantastic. It may not seem like it could be all that different because most games are still gonna run at 480p, but it really does make a difference. This footage is so clean and crisp it looks straight out of an emulator. Here's some comparisons for you. Let's start with 480i Composite. This is what most Xbox players are probably used to. Back in its heyday, this was still what 99% of us were using. Again, those of us who never got SCART. The gold standard for HD output on an Xbox was, and still is, the Microsoft HD Pack, the official component cables from the era that nobody bought. Nowadays, these cables are very rare and expensive, so I never ended up buying any for myself. But I do have what was for a long time the only alternative, cheap third-party cables that, let's be honest, have a lot of problems. These cables are sadly infamous for their poor quality. They're often susceptible to being blurry or causing ghosting, and sometimes the video feed can just drop out entirely for a few seconds, which really sucks during gameplay. I still think the image quality is a noticeable improvement over composite, but a lot of people think the issues are just too severe to recommend them, which I do think is valid. 
More recently, the Xbox Open Source Video Project, or XOSVP, has appeared, which attempts to achieve results that are as good or better than the original Microsoft HD pack using off-the-shelf components and an open source design. This means, in theory, anyone can build one themselves at minimal cost. I actually don't have one of these either, so sadly I can't compare. I was planning to try building one myself, but then the HDMI mod came out and I just jumped to that instead. If you guys are interested, maybe I'll build one on video and then we can compare. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison with the cables that I do own. I've slowed it down so you can better see what the frames actually look like. Now, composite is... composite. It's got inherent quality loss and it's 480i only, so that's already half the vertical resolution gone. But an interesting outlier is the cheap component cables. The image is... blown out? I don't know if that's a lack of bandwidth thing, but it's not hard to see why people don't like these cables, even though the feed is noticeably sharper than composite. HDMI is undoubtedly the best one here. Here's some close-ups so you can see the detail. I think we can probably ignore composite here. Like I said, half the vertical resolution. It's obviously going to be less detailed than 480p. Component and HDMI are close, but HDMI still has the edge. You can particularly see it in the red lines on the side of this logo. They're pretty clearly defined in HDMI and somewhat blurred together on component. Now, you might consider this an unfair comparison. After all, everyone agrees the cheap component cables have issues, and composite is about the lowest form of AV transmission possible. The HDMI mod is also much more expensive, so what do you expect? And I do think that's true. But I wanted to show that even with 480, you can still see differences going from one video interface to another. If you want the sharpest, cleanest image from your Xbox, this is the only game in town. Okay, to be fair, not the only game. You can play Xbox games on a 360 with HDMI, but while its backwards compatibility is pretty decent, there are a lot of games that don't run well or at all, even with mods. So yeah, as far as video quality goes, I can't recommend this mod enough. It looks and sounds fantastic. It also gives you the convenience of plugging an Xbox directly into a modern TV, monitor, or capture card that happens to not have analog inputs. No need for any bulky dongle that probably needs its own power supply as well. That being said, there are some reasons you might want to pass on it too. As I've said, it's a little pricey. No more than any other HDMI mod like it, and it is cheaper than a high quality upscaler like a RetroTINK, OSSE, or FrameMeister, but it is the most expensive option for your Xbox. More expensive than the XOSVP, and even more expensive than the official HD cables if you can find them. It is undoubtedly the highest quality option available, but you do pay a premium for it. Another reason is that you do have to remove the original AV port. Some people might not like the idea that to get high quality video you have to sacrifice the old analog outputs. Personally, I don't mind this, but I can see why you would. Especially if you consider those analog visuals as an integral part of your nostalgia or the aesthetic. I mean, you could always have two Xboxes to get the best of both worlds. Finally, the biggest reason you might want to avoid this mod is that it is pretty challenging. Again, no more than other HDMI mods like it, but more than any other mod I've ever done, including PS2 mod chipping or 360 RGH-ing. While no one step is particularly difficult, except for desoldering the AV port, that did take me a bit of time to do, there are just a lot of them and it can easily get overwhelming. I myself spread the mod over several days because it was just a lot to do in one sitting, especially while being filmed. But all of that being said, I absolutely think it was worth it. And if you love your OG Xbox, I think you'll definitely agree. So if you're interested in convenient, high quality video and audio from your Xbox and don't mind the compromises I just mentioned, I highly recommend getting yourself an Xbox HD+. Before I go, I do want to give a big shout out to Make Megahertz for not only creating this, but also for helping me with some of the installation. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye guys.